Finally, one more consequence of the hydrogen bonding in water. Let's take a look at these water molecules over here. So here we have a hydrogen from this water molecule being attracted to the oxygen of this water molecule. That attraction can sometimes end up leading to um, this hydrogen ion dissociating from its molecule. Okay, it can kind of float off and come over and stick to this one. And essentially what's happening here is this water molecule is behaving as an acid. It's donating a proton um, to something else. Okay, so this happens in water. Um, a small number of the molecules are doing this just sort of all of the time. And the end result is that we form a hydroxide ion, which is negatively charged. And the hydrogen ion that's formed joins up with another water, water molecule. That forms what's called a hydronium ion, which is positively charged. Okay, so there's still a net balance of charges. The water as a whole is still neutral, uh, but we've got this taking place um, just sort of throughout in small amounts. If we actually measure what's the concentration of water molecules that ionize like this, what we would get is a concentration of 10 to the minus seven molar. And that's a number that should sound kind of familiar. If you've heard about the pH scale before, I'm sure you've heard about the pH scale before. Uh, this is a measurement that maps onto the pH scale. So pH is a way that we can measure acidity. Uh, substances can be acidic, basic, or neutral, neither of the two. And that measurement is based on the hydrogen ion concentration. By the way, I've been being somewhat careful to refer to this as a hydrogen ion, which is exactly what it is, we will also be calling this a proton. Okay, a hydrogen ion is the same thing as a proton. Okay, so just as a note for going forward. So that proton concentration or hydrogen ion concentration, we measure it on the pH scale, which can range from zero to 14. The way that the pH is actually measured is with this calculation right here. This is one that you'd probably need to have access to a calculator to in order to complete this calculation. Um, but all you would need to do is take one over the concentration of hydrogen ions, so 10 to the minus seven or whatever it is for the solution you're dealing with, and then take the log of that, log base 10, and what you would get is a number between zero and 14. So um, the pH of a solution, or the hydrogen ion concentration of a solution, is what dictates whether we're talking about a neutral solution, an acidic solution, or a basic solution. And just as a reminder, acidic solutions have a pH less than seven, Basic solutions have a pH greater than seven. We will be encountering both of these this semester in physiology. And one other thing we'll be encountering that goes along with this is a buffer. Um, so if you are familiar with buffers, um, perhaps you remember from a previous class, what do buffers do? Buffers help to prevent pH changes in a given solution. A great example of a buffer in human physiology is in our blood. We have these ions uh, called bicarbonate ions that are just always normally present in the blood. And what they're able to do is absorb extra hydrogen ions. When they do that, if they combine with a hydrogen ion, what they'll form is carbonic acid. And this reaction can go in either direction. Okay, so if we have carbonic acid present in our blood, and let's say the blood uh, starts to get too basic, okay, so we need more protons present, what carbonic acid can do is donate its proton. So it can, it can donate this one back into solution. Um, and help to buffer changes in pH in the blood. So these two substances together, these are what we would call a buffer pair. And again, they help to maintain the normal pH of blood. So pH ordinarily of blood is just a little bit on the basic side, 7.4 is normal, um, give or take 0.05. And so if the pH goes outside of that range, if it drops below 7.35 or above 7.45, this buffer is one of the first things that'll kick into play and help to help to maintain the normal pH of the blood. We'll come back to that more when we talk about the respiratory system actually is very heavily tied into this.